Now I will demonstrate the bias point analysis. In PSPICE, the bias point analysis calculates the node voltages and currents through the devices in the circuit. Bias point analysis also takes into account any voltage sources applied to the circuit, any initial conditions set on the devices or nodes in the circuit. With the bias point enabled, the output file provides a list of the entire analog and digital node voltages, currents and total power of all the voltage sources in the circuit and a list of small signal parameters for all the devices in the circuit. The circuit drawn in the capture is represented as a netlist of all the components and their respective connections to other components. This netlist is automatically generated when users run the simulation and can be seen in the outputs folder in the project manager. After the simulation is run, the bias voltage, current and power values can be displayed on the schematic. Users can save and reuse the bias point data from a simulation which is useful if a number of simulations have to be run on a large circuit that has a long simulation runtime. Saved BIOS point analysis are loaded by selecting the load BIOS point option in the simulation profile. So let us start by building a very simple circuit and demonstrating the BIOS point analysis. I start by launching the capture CIS application. I'll create a new project. I'll name it as Bias Point. And I'll make sure it is of the type P space analog or mixed AD. I'll store it in the desktop. Right. So now I'll press OK. I'll select create a new blank project option. Then press OK again. This will take me to the schematic window and here I will start placing parts. I will start with the VDC. And I will set the voltage to 10 volt DC. Then I will connect a resistor R analog. And I will change the value once again from 1k to 500 ohms. Lastly, I will select a diode D1N 4148. It is a silicon diode. I will rotate it once. A new pop up window will appear. Select that. Here, change the analysis type from time domain to bias point. That is it, you do not have to do anything else, just make sure that analysis type is bias point and you select here general settings. If you already have a previously saved bias point, you can click on the load bias point option and here you press on the browse icon to select the file you have previously saved. Now on the other hand, you want to save the current bias point, you can select on the save bias point option give a name and save it wherever you want right so currently i will disable that all i want is simply general settings so i select on that apply press ok right so now you can see that the bias point voltage bias point current icons are enabled however when i press them nothing is happen because the simulation has not yet been run so what we will do we will first run the simulation a new window appears and you will immediately see the bias voltages and bias currents of each of the component in the circuit has been displayed. Right? For example, the diode here is operating at 760.0 millivolt and 18.48 milliampere. So this will be the quiescent point or operating point or the bias point of this diode. Okay. Now coming to the simulation window, there is nothing you can do in the simulation window. In fact, I will show you when you go to the trace option, the trace option is not there at all. It is completely disabled. This is one of the characteristics of the bias point and you are going to obtain the bias voltages and currents directly on the schematic itself. Now, 
in another way of identifying the bias point if you want to show graphically where the load line and the forward characteristics of the diode meet then i'll have to change the simulation profile now to do that i'll go to the edit simulation profile i'll change the bias point analysis to dc sweep analysis i'll select the primary sweep option here and in the sweep variable i'm going to sweep the input which is v1 give the name of the voltage source as v1 here then coming to this the starting value let it be 0 volt end value as we have given it here is 10 volt i'll set it as 10 volt and increment 0 0.01 volt smaller the value finer the count so press apply press ok once again run the simulation now you can see the simulation window is enabled so i'll go to trace add trace i want the diode current so select id1 press ok Now I need to change the x-axis as well because the x-axis is currently representing the input voltage. I want the voltage across the diode as the x-axis. So double click on the x-axis, select x-axis here and select axis variable. Here you change to VD1 is to 1. Press OK. And immediately you will see the forward characteristics of the diode will be displayed. Now over this I want to superimpose the load line. Now to do that we need to have some basic information on the load line concept. So I'll go back to the circuit here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply KVL and then going to find the values for the load line X axis and Y axis points. So let me start the discussion on that first. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'll start by applying KVL. So when I apply KVL, so it is V1 minus of VD1 is equals to IDR1. So I will call the voltage across the diode D1 as VD and the current across the same as ID. So the equation here is V1 minus VD equals to ID into R1. And when I rearrange, I'll get V1 equals to IDR1 plus VD. Now, when you want to find the load line points on the X and Y axis respectively, you need to then put the value of VD and ID as equal to zero and evaluate the equation one here. So I start by putting when VD equals to zero, what will happen to the equation? It will become V1 equals to ID R1. So I'm going to find the ID here, which is V1 by R1. And for the current circuit, we can see the V1 is 10 volt, R1 is 500 ohms. So when I come back and substitute, it will be 10 divided by 500, which is 20 milliampere. So this will be somewhere here, 20 milliampere. This is the point. So our load line is going to start on the y-axis at 20 milliampere point. Now we need to find the x-axis point. So in order to find the x-axis point, then I go back to the equation one and I substitute id is equals to zero. When id is equals to zero, the equation one reduces to v1 equals to vd equals to 10 volt, and this will be the point on the x-axis where the load line meets. So coming back to the simulation profile, at somewhere here, when I extend the value of the x-axis range here, I'll find 10 volts. So a line drop from 20 milliampere point on the y-axis to 10 volt point on the x-axis will be the load line. And wherever the forward characteristic curve intersects the load line will be the operating point of the diode. Now, one of the most interesting things about the load line would always be its slope. To find the load line slope, we are once again going to apply KVL to the circuit. So this is the same equation what we had previously written, which is V1 minus VD equals to ID R1. Let the equation be completely divided by R1. So it will be V1 by R1 minus of VD by R1 equals to ID. I will rewrite this equation for ID in the form ID equals to, I'll write this term first and I'll write the R1 component separately. So it will be minus 1 by R1 into VD plus V1 by R1 as it is. So this equation, we'll call it as equation 4 and it is actually of the form y is equals to mx plus c where m in fact is a slope of the line. So for the equation 4, the value of m equals to minus 1 by r1. Therefore, the slope of the curve, particularly the load line here is minus 1 by r1 and r1 is 500. So I'll get it as minus 2 milli. This is the slope. So finally, having taken the values of the y-axis point, x-axis point and the slope, we are now finally ready to find an expression for the load line. And this is usually written in the form of the diode current equation, which is of the generic form I equals to I naught exponential of Vd divided by Kb into T minus 1. 
right. So, for the current scenario, we note that the load line starts at the y axis point of 20 milliamps and it has a slope of minus 2 milli. So, equation 5 can be reduced to, I am starting with the slope here, slope is minus 2 milli. So, I will write it as minus 2 e minus 3 multiplied by v1 of d1 voltage across diode d1 here plus 20 milli. 20 milli is the starting point on the y axis. So, I am going to come back here on to the simulation profile, ok. So, I am going to now add a trace and here I am going to write the expression for the trace. So, I am going to write this equation minus 2 e minus 3, I am going to start with that. So, this is opening the parenthesis minus 2 e minus 3 star v1 of d1 plus 20 e minus 3. Press apply and you will see the load line immediately appears. It may not be visible to you, so I am going to thicken it. Right. So, I have now taken both the forward characteristic curve as well as the load line and you can see they intersect at some point. Now, in order to identify the exact point, I will enable the cursor here. So, you can use the toggle cursor option. So, now you can go and place wherever you want. So, I am going to just take it to the exact point where they intersect. Now, coming back to the cursor window here, we will note down the values of x and y axis points along the exact bias point. The current or ID is given by 18.464 milli and the voltage is 759.939 ok. So, in fact, we will note them 18.464 or it is almost 18.5 and this is almost 760. So, I will come back to the circuit again here. What I am going to do is I am going to very quickly change the edit simulation profile and I am going to change once again back to bias point, apply ok, I run the simulation again. And now you will see it is 18.48 and 760. So, the same points what we obtain. You note that the moment you enable the bias point analysis option, the simulation results will disappear. Right. So, anyhow, we have now found the bias point or the operating point of the diode using both the bias point analysis as well as the DC sweep bias point analysis. Yes, so that is about the bias point analysis. If you like this video, kindly like and subscribe to my channel for more information. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.